Dinosaur Lady, The Daring Discoveries of Mary Anning, the First Paleontologist. Words by Linda Skears, pictures by Marta Alvarez McGinnis. Dinosaur Lady. Mary Anning dodged high tides and crashing waves to scour the beach near her hometown of Lyme Regis, England. She filled her basket with curiosities to sell to tourists like seashells and fossils with fanciful local names like snake stones, which were amenonites, devil toenails, belemnites, and angel wings. She scrambled over crumbling cliffs and rocky peaks while avoiding life-threatening landslides. Despite the constant danger, Mary wasn't afraid. She was determined to uncover the area's long-buried secrets, no matter the risk. Mary learned to read and write at Sunday school, but she wanted to learn more. She had so many questions about the bones and fossils she found, and she needed answers. She borrowed books and copied scientific papers. She sketched intricate drawings of her discoveries, and she made notes. Lots and lots of notes. One morning, when Mary and her brother were exploring the cliffs, they saw something surprising. Nestled in the rock was a large eye socket looking right back at them. Carefully, they chiseled away dirt and stone to expose a four-foot-long head with a pointed snout. Massive jaw, hundreds of teeth. It was frightening, but Mary wasn't scared. She was fascinated. They coaxed workers from the village to help dig it out and carry it home. While the men returned to their work, Mary set out to find the creature's body. The cliffs were constantly shifting and sliding. It had to be buried nearby, but where? Day after day, Mary scrambled over the cliffs. Week after week, she searched. Month after month. After almost a year, Mother Nature lent Mary a helping hand. The powerful wind and pounding rain from a devastating storm caused several landslides. In one night, the cliffs' ancient layers were exposed, layers that would have taken Mary years to uncover with her hammer and chisel. Something caught Mary's eye. Bones. Boldly, Mary chipped away and uncovered ribs, vertebrae, flippers. Was it a crocodile? Fish? Lizard? No, Mary had discovered a creature never seen before. Was she scared? Nope, not at all. But many villagers were. Soon they were talking about Mary's monster. Word traveled to a rich collector who offered to buy the skeleton. Mary hated to see it go, but the money would help the Awning family survive for months. The collector donated it to a London museum, and scientists and geologists flocked to the exhibit. They studied it, calculated, debated. They named it Ichthyosaurus, which means fish lizard. The word dinosaur hadn't even been invented yet. They made an announcement that shocked the world. Mary's find wasn't just old. It was millions of years old. Their declaration shattered the commonly held belief that the Earth was only 6,000 years old. Also, no one had realized that a species could become extinct until they studied the remains of a creature that no longer walked the earth. While others discussed her discovery, Mary kept exploring and learning. Over the years, Mary also found many odd, dark, lumpy pebbles inside skeletons. She examined them, reread her notes, studied her drawings. Mary figured out what they were, except it wasn't something a lady it was something a lady shouldn't talk about. But Mary was more of a scientist than a proper lady, so she proclaimed these stones, known as bizarres, were actually fossilized poop. Geologists sneered, scientists scoffed. Then they took a closer look and realized she was right. Mary's discovery helped scholars learn more about what ancient creatures ate. Mary also found many long, thin, cone-shaped fossils. They were unremarkable, ordinary, at least on the outside. Curious, she cut one open. Tucked inside was a small pocket filled with a thick, dark substance. Mary was even more curious now. Adding a few drops of water turned the substance into ink. Mary's discovery proved that ancient aquatic creatures squirted ink to hide themselves from hungry predators. When Mary was 24, she made another amazing discovery. This creature didn't have legs or flippers, it had wings. Mary had unearthed a prehistoric flying reptile called a pterosaur. Around the world, scientists were talking about Mary's incredible discoveries, but they weren't talking about Mary. Not at first. 
Even though Mary could identify a species from one single bone and rebuild entire skeletons like a jigsaw puzzle, she couldn't join the Geological Society of London. Women were not allowed. She couldn't attend lectures or teach university classes or even take classes. But Mary knew her discoveries were important and would change the way people viewed the Earth's past, and so did many geologists, scientists, and scholars. Because where did they go when they had questions? Straight to Mary's cottage. Eager to learn more, they followed her over the cliffs, even if it terrified them, and it did. Just like long-buried fossils, Mary's achievements have slowly been uncovered and shared with the world. Her daring discoveries helped form paleontology, the branch of geology that uses fossils to study prehistoric life. And she did all that with a homemade hammer, a chisel, and a never-ending quest to fearlessly keep exploring and learning. Bone Bits and Fossil Facts A paleontologist is a scientist who studies fossils. Megalosaurus was the first dinosaur officially named in 1824. In 1842, paleontologist Richard Owens coined the term dinosaur from the Greek dinos, meaning terrible, and saurus, meaning lizard. Over 700 different kinds of dinosaurs have been discovered and named. A fossil, Latin for having been dug up, is the remains of an animal or plant that has turned to rock over many years. An ammonite is a prehistoric sea creature with a spiral shell often found on beaches. A belemnite is a prehistoric sea creature like a squid which squirts ink to defend itself from predators. Coprolites is the fancy name for fossilized poop, also known as bezoars. They are they are one they were at one time thought to have been all sorts of medicinal properties. Dinosaur fossils have been found on all seven continents. Some dinosaur eggs were as small as your thumbnail. Others were the size of basketballs. Petrocola foliformis is a type of clam also known as the false angel wing because its ribbed white shells resemble angel wings. Mary Anning Timeline so in May, May 21st of 1799, Mary Anning is born in Lyme Ridge, England. On August 19, 1800, baby Mary is struck by lightning and survives. In 1810, Mary's father, Richard Anning, dies. In 1811, Mary and her brother discover an ichthyosaurus. In 1823, Mary discovers the first complete pterosaurus. 1824, Mary announces that bizarre stones are actually fossilized poop. In 1826, Mary discovers a belemite fossil containing dried ink. Mary opens Anning's Fossil Depot. In 1828, Mary discovers a pterosaur, a prehistoric flying reptile that later becomes known as Pterodactylus macronix. In 1829, Mary goes to London, her first and only trip out of Lyme Regis. Mary discovers a fish believed to be an evolutionary link between sharks and rays. In 1844, King Frederick Augustus II of Saxony visits Mary in her shop. In, 1840, in uh, March 19th of 1847, Mary dies of breast cancer at the age of 47. In 2010, the Royal Society of London names Mary Annings one of the 10 most influential British women of science. Author's note, even as a young girl, Mary had the uncanny ability to spot a small fossil, seashell, or bone fragment that others overlooked. She used this skill when she accompanied her father on his scavenging trips. Her father was a carpenter and cabinet maker who supplemented his meager earnings by finding seashells and fossils to sell to tourists vacationing in the area. Taking in the sea air, Mary was looking for trinkets to sell, but she was also looking for answers to questions that baffled her. What created these strange-looking fossils? Where did they come from? What were they? She spent her entire life exploring, studying, and learning without any formal education and relying on her own observations, intricate drawings, and meticulous notes. She became an expert on prehistoric creatures, earning the nickname Princess of Paleontology. Mary also lived in one of the best fossil hunting places on Earth. Lyme Regis is part of the Jurassic Coast and was underwater 200 million years ago. Storms and winter weather erode and crumble the cliffs, exposing fossils and bones. Mary didn't use special equipment, just a hammer her father had made, a chisel, and a hat that she had shellacked so many times it was as hard as a helmet. 
Mary's father died when she was 11, thrusting Mary, her 14-year-old brother Joseph, and their mother even deeper into poverty. Mary's curiosities now helped pay the rent and buy food. During her lifetime, Mary made five major discoveries of previously unknown species and several smaller but still significant finds that helped change the way people looked at the world and helped them better understand the past. When Mary was only 24, she discovered the first complete uh, plesiosaurus, an aquatic creature with flippers that was such an astonishing find, paleontologist George Cuvier declared it a fraud. But after he examined it, he proclaimed, it is the most amazing creature ever discovered. By the time Mary was 27, she had managed to save up enough money to buy a cottage with a glass storefront window and turn the front room into a shop called Anning's Fossil Depot. She proudly displayed her discoveries in the window. It was so unusual for a woman to become a shopkeeper and own her own business that it made headlines in the local newspaper. This tongue twister written in 1908 is said to be about Mary Anning. She sells, she, she sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. For if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashell, she, she, <laughs> seashore shells. Try that one out, boys and girls. It really is a tongue twister. Her portrait now hangs in the Natural History Museum in London. The British Journal for the History of Science considers Mary Anning the greatest fossilist in the world the world has ever known. Um, and then on the back, there's a picture of her again. It says, carefully, they chiseled away dirt and stone to expose a four foot long head with a pointed snout. But Mary wasn't scared. She was fascinating. Um, and it has the timeline of her life and some of her fantastic fossil finds. Thank you for listening. <laughs>